So by this point, COD Next is probably finishing up. We likely just streamed the entire event showcasing Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer, Warzone and all, and now I'm off working on my initial impressions video here for you. But while that'll be up later tonight, stick around for that. In the meantime, I wanted to take a look at some of the key and large changes that you can expect to see in Modern Warfare 3 if you decide to jump into it. We've got a lot to run down, so let's not delay too much. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you find it idle and insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 3. We've got a lot upcoming, so I'd love to have in the community. For now though, let's jump into what are some of the big important changes that you should be aware of in Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer. Let's start out with Create a Class. So Create a Class is kind of what almost looks like a modified pick 10, if you want to call it that. I don't think we'll ever get any confirmation of it, but to me, there's this feeling that it may have been the initial tone for design, but then shifted somewhere along the line. But you have things like vests, weapons, lethals, tacticals, and then gear. Vests are one of the major departures here from what's different, especially from Modern Warfare 2, but also in a more overarching feel as well. Vests, I almost feel like are similar to classes, not entirely, but they set the tone for how your entire build will go for each individual custom class, offering up almost perk-like bonuses to your class as is, to which then you can add in individual gear items or perks, as we'll touch on in a second, to add on top of that. These will, at a top level, give you some attributes for your class, and then from there you can edit how you wish. Some offering more, some offering less. Now, in the beta build here, we have things like the infantry vest, which increases tax sprint duration and reduces refresh time, the engineer vest, which allows players to spot enemy equipment, field upgrades, and kill streaks through walls while aiming down sights, highlights them for your team, and it grants faster field upgrade recharges. However, it also comes with hidden benefits here, where you can take an additional tactical and gain an additional gear slot at the cost of not having a lethal equipment. Your gunner vest, this is something that deploys with max ammo and improves reload speed, but also grants players overkill, which is two primaries at the cost of no ability to adjust your boot category of gear. And then finally, your demolition vest allows players to resupply lethal and tactical equipment every 25 seconds, but also grants players two times lethals at no real penalty. So you can see what I kind of mean in regards to setting the tone for your overall class or play style with each custom class. This is not all of the vests. There were a handful more when I played back in August at Sledgehammer Studio, one of which the assassin vest was kind of overpowered at that point. It granted you an additional gear option, plus gave you ghost to the degree that you didn't have to move. Whereas you do have to move if you want to use that ghost TV camo gear that we'll get to in a second. Another major addition here for the creator class is the new attachment filtering system. New with Modern Warfare 3's gunsmith is now the ability to search for specific attachment attributes. Right now, there's no detailed stats in the beta build that will be there for the main launch, but it will apparently sort based on top to bottom or effectiveness for categories that you'd like to see in creating a loadout, making it much easier, in my opinion, if you like hyper focus on one aspect or even just want to iron things out to be evenly built. We have the ability to choose from mobility, recoil control, fire rate, damage, accuracy, range, and handling, and then other things like locked and unlocked attachments, as well as aftermarket parts and those conversion kits. We also see new and returning attachments touching on attachments slightly. I don't want to go too far into depth with this because there are still a handful, honestly, like dozens and maybe even hundreds of attachments added in with this because it's the same thing that we see with Modern Warfare 2's weapons where you have attachments unlocked with every single weapon and well, it's a whole new game of weapons. Without going too far into depth with this, you can see that there's a ton of these added. There's things like the Slate Reflector and Nidar Model 2023, those being sort of returning optics from prior Sledgehammer games, but even an ELO site dubbed the MK23 Reflector, which I'm incredibly happy is back. I miss the ELO sites tremendously. Let's talk a little bit about perk rebalancing. As we mentioned, gear is the big part here out of this, and that's how your perks are classified. Some are more focused in the way of vests, gloves, and boots, others just categorized as gear. Now this is not all of them, but here's what the beta will hold. Gloves, you have the quick grip gloves, which increase weapon swap speed, which is essentially your fast hands. Scavenger gloves resupply ammo and throwing knives from dead players, that being scavenger. Commando gloves reload while sprinting, kind of giving you effects of versions of gung-ho. Your boots, you have the lightweight boots, which increase movement speed and swim speed while reducing noises while swimming, which is similar to your lightweight, but also kind of tying into the next one. Climbing boots increase climbing and mantling speed while reducing fall damage, which is kind of your lightweight pro effects of past. The stalker boots increase strafe and ADS movement speeds, which is just stalker. The tactical pads increase slide distance and allow for full ADS while sliding and increases the stance transition speeds and crouch movement speeds. The covert sneakers eliminate footstep audio, essentially your dead silence. And then you have your gear of the EOD padding, which reduces damage from non killstreak explosives and fire, basically EOD. Tack mask reduces that strength of enemy flash 
rush, stuns, and gas grenades, with immunity to shock, EMP, and snapshot grenades, again, essentially TAC mask. Mission Control Comlink reduces kill streaks by one or by a score of 125, essentially your hardline. The Bone Conduction Headset reduces combat noise, allowing improved identification of enemy footsteps and gunshots, which is essentially awareness of prior games. The LR Detector warns of hostile laser and radiation sources, and Ghost TV Camo while moving blocks detection from UAVs and enemy radar sources as well as heartbeat sensors, essentially your ghost. So again, you can see how it's kind of perks, but just recategorized and re-put into different packaging, but that's how it's going to work here at this. Now, let's talk a little bit about weaponry before we jump into anything else, really. There's a lot of new and returning weapons here, and again, these are not all of the weapons in the full launch of the game, but instead what will be there in the beta. For the assault rifles, we have the SVA 545, the MTZ 556, the MCW, and I'm gonna be honest with you, this was probably one of my favorites to play around with. It was a beast, zero recoil. Then you have the battle rifles of the MTZ 762 and the Bass B. You have the SMGs of the Rival 9 and AMR 9, as well as the Striker. You have the shotguns of the Riveter and the Lockwood 680, the LMGs of the Holger 26 and the Pulumyat 762, the marksman rifles of the MTZ Interceptor and MCW 6.8. Eight, the sniper rifles of the Longbow and the KV Inhibitor, the pistols of the WSP Stinger, which is the Micro Uzi, the Renetti and the Core 45, and the launchers of the Pila. Let's talk about some actual gameplay gear and equipment mix-ups here with this. Firstly, Battle Rage is now a tactical equipment rather than a field upgrade. You have new items in the tacticals of the EMD grenade, which applies a tracking device to enemies hit, revealing them on your team's minimap. The scatter mine, which throws a field of mines across a wide area that detonates when enemies come within range. Not liking the sound of that one. The lethals, you have the breacher drone, which is an explosive drone that is automated and goes towards enemies. The thermo barrack grenade was added, which is basically a thermite. Then you have the field upgrades of the comm scrambler, which disables comms and enemies won't be able to call in streaks. Enemy UAVs also will not reveal players in that scrambler giving ghosts to that sort of shrouded area. The med box deploys a box of medical supplies for your team, and the ACS is the automated computer spike, which captures points and temporarily hacks enemy devices. Now, jumping into multiplayer in particular, not necessarily like out of action combat, naturally, all of the gameplay stuff we've touched on since the reveal is in this build. Slide canceling, reload canceling, red dots on the minimap, health increases to 150 at base, dead silence is a perk as we touched on, and much more. That stuff we've already talked about, but let's jump into some stuff that we have not yet talked about. Firstly, map voting here is something we see and will see within the beta, which will allow all players to vote on one of two specific maps that are granted here in that mode you're queuing for. Fingers crossed this also means the removal of disbanding lobbies, or at least a lessening of it, but anyways, we also see that the matches will start with infill fades from black and white to color. Not a huge deal, but also not my personal favorite. It is what it is. We see specific spawn points are slightly adjusted here and different. I didn't get much playtime before the stream earlier today. Like when I'm making this video, I had a couple of games under my belt during our tech test the day before here. So we had like two or three games or so, but not all the spawns are the same. The one that I noticed was High Rise's infill was in the center of the office for my team, which is very much so not what it was back in the day where you were in that back corner and you pushed out for that cross map sniping point. But on the other hand, I didn't get to play the standard modes like TDM or Domination, but instead we played Kill Confirmed, which was a mode that was not in the original Modern Warfare 2, so who knows, maybe that is something that is changed and only that mode that I played is a little different. Also, there's no fly-in animation like we've talked about in prior games upon spawn, which is much needed not to have that, I think. Great that we don't have it. And I don't know really how it fits in here, just kind of talking spawns and throwing it in there. Honestly, I'd like to let it be known that some of the spawns are horrible. So that's going to be something that will be worked out. Those aren't definitive, but yeah, you're going to notice that in the beta. Also, dare I say that audio actually kind of worked? I know that I had a few situations where I straight up perfectly could discern where players were based on their audio, which also makes class selection much more important now. Do you take something that mitigates that audio for your footsteps? Do you take a perk that allows you to hear footsteps? It really comes down to how you want to play it. Now, other things you'll notice are some HUD elements here. The hit markers have changed. You have standard single hit markers, which is a regular body shot. The double white hit marker is a headshot hit marker. Multipliers have changed. You're not going to be granted a guaranteed one-shot headshot kill, so that's something that will give you the notification that you were on target and where you wanted to be, and then the double red hit marker is a headshot kill shot. There's yellow XP denominations for items in-game, like XPs and kills and captures of flags. The HUD text is different. This one I'm kind of indifferent on and feeling, but it's also... 
It's an interesting choice. Like, the font seems to be too wide for my liking, but it's also, again, not the end of the world. Streak pop-ups are different in design, as is the icons for the game mode you're playing at the very beginning of the match. Honestly, I kind of like the look of it, as stupid as that sounds. I like the topographic background behind the game icon. I think the blue also accents it pretty well. Same with the field upgrades, whenever it shows that those are ready. That's a different animation, and it's honestly pretty appealing, I think. But anyways, that's some of the gameplay stuff that you'll see. A lot of the gameplay that is different is, again, just the stuff we've talked about already ready and you'll actually be able to feel it rather than just hearing me talk about it which is definitely nice and then finally the last thing I want to touch on here that is different that I picked up on of course is we have different operators minus price and ghost all new operators the one thing that is interesting is that we have still the generic spec grew and core tack spec grew you have rocket price and ghost as well as blueprint and jabber and then core tack has thirst doc warden and makarov as well as blaze but anyways, those are the big changes that I picked up on here as of our tech test and our first hands-on experience. Very well possible I could think of a few more things here. Again, this is before COD Next is even happening as of me recording this, so that's going to be like two to three hours of actual game time streaming it that we can absolutely probably pick up on, and we'll keep you in the loop with everything. But anyways, that is the first of our coverage here for Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer. Let me know your thoughts down below. Again, stick around here on the channel. Got a lot to say in regards to my personal feedback, my personal thoughts, my personal opinions on the game, but wanted to fill you guys in with an immediate look in at multiplayer on the video side of things here if you missed the live stream earlier or whatever the case may be. But wanted to fill you guys in, let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and submitting with all things Modern Warfare 3. We have so much upcoming here that you guys will not want to miss. So make sure you stay here on the channel. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. See you later. Take care and peace.